Hi, everyone. This is Roger here. Um, as you probably know, I'm phoning this in from a prison in the UK in Suffolk, I think. And um, I've got a limited amount of recording or phone time, so Robin and others will fill you in on various details. Obviously, the first thing to say is that, yes, I'm doing fine, um, as far as I'm aware anyway. I've got uh, a single room. I've got uh, access to emails. Uh, I'm writing stuff on a Word document type thing. And, uh, yeah, I can make phone calls and all the rest of it. So all good. Um, with a little bit of luck, I win the appeal and should be out early next year or if not later next year. So what I'm involved in is I'm just completing a book, dare I say, on the trial and the political and legal implications. Uh, so I hope to have that done in a first draft in the next two weeks. Uh, I'm doing a podcast on transcendence, which should be starting in a week or two, coming out once a week. And all being well, I'll do another book on assemblies and the political strategy and what have you. So in case it's not obvious, I'm not interested in being self-pitying, getting, you know, bitter and twisted, moaning and all the rest of it. Not least because such a viewpoint really is part of the general materialist, atomized sort of view of the world, which is intrinsic to the worldview of our opponents. And needless to say, we're not going to be able to overcome them using the same worldview that they have. In other words, we need to be detached, uh, transcend our circumstances, and act not necessarily out of a moral motivation, though obviously that's important, but out of a perspective of who we are and being who we are. And I'll be saying a lot more about that on the podcast, and time allowing, I'll say something about it before I finish. Um, so before I start sort of running through things, obviously one of the main things, or maybe the main thing to say, is the climate situation is 100 times worse than it was last year. If, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, the AMOC information has come through about temperatures declining in Europe by 10 to 30 degrees centigrade. More likely than not, before 2050, there's been a massive spike in Atlantic sea temperatures, a massive melt of the Antarctic Sea ice, a 0.2 degrees centigrade uh, hike, which no one quite knows why. And last but not least, new calculations around heat sensitivity, meaning we're on the verge of locking in 4 degrees centigrade. So it is what it is. And this makes the message of revolution in the 21st century absolutely coherent, absolutely vital and the main message really for this century, which is the political arrangements under which we labour, as it were, are going to collapse. And this is not a bad thing. It doesn't mean the human race is going to then go up in a puff of smoke. It's going to, to provide us with the greatest opportunities to create a new positive civilization out of the ashes, as you might say, of what the present elites are doing to us. And this opportunity has not come along for decades, hundreds of years, or even thousands of years, to, to be honest with ourselves. And the critical element of success here is our own agency, our own collective agency. In other words, this new civilization is not just going to happen. It's not determined to happen, but neither is human extinction. We are at this moment of massive agency, and it is an interesting time to be alive, let's put it like that. So coming down to practicalities, uh, if you're expecting me to be giving a big rhetorical speech, <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that. I might talk in some depth about the whole transcendence thing in my next monthly talk. What I want to do is to say at this point when I'm in prison and we have an up and functioning core group, is now the moment at which we need to expand revolution in the 21st century, or Rev 21, I think Robin and myself have decided should be the shortened version. Um, so as I say, the big development here is we have a great, solid, uh, and uh, in-service core group for this organization who set up the conference, which many of you went to, and we've got the prospect of significant amounts of funding I'll tell you about in a minute. So as someone that sets organizations up, um, I can say with some certainty that 50% of the job is 
actually getting the core group. And after that, you know, it's rock and roll. So what does rock and roll sort of look like? At the moment, we've got 3,000 people in the database. So we decided to get that to 10,000 people or thereabouts by this time next year. And the broad strategy we're pursuing, as many of you know, is twofold. It's setting up assemblies uh, to replace uh, local governments or national governments through, um, through citizens' assemblies or parallel governments and such like. And the other side of the pincer movement, as it were, is civil resistance, which we all know about. So this is in the context of this democracy versus fascism uh, framing for the next you know, decades, which is, are we or are we not going to have a new form of democracy, or are we going to have the default fascisms that are waiting in the, in the wings? And we saw the beginnings, examples of that in the rioting that happened in the UK recently. In other words, it's there, it's waiting to happen, it's real, and we have to stop it. And along with that is the inner work, the inner work of transcendence and culture and service that uh, I'm increasingly talking about because, as we all know or should know, that assemblies and civil resistance will come to nothing without that internal culture, um, which is created through the inner work. So the inner and the outer have to fuse together and be grounded together. Okay, so concretely, what's the deal? So myself and Robin have sort of got this down that three things, something concrete we can get our heads around. Inspiration, first of all, training, stroke education, and thirdly, networking. In other words, in part of this global revolutionary ecology, as we might call it, we are not there to organize, to do the frontline stuff, assemblies, civil resistance. We're there to be a support organization to inspire people, train them, and bring people together to get things on the go. So, concretely, it means, number one, talks, okay, getting this coherent, exciting, exhilarating, terrifying message across to the general public, to the movement. This is the framing for the 21st century. This will be done through four, no, five <laughs> types of talks or happenings. First of all, weekly or fortnightly introduction sessions where people can come and speak to Robin or Davide or whoever, about getting involved either centrally in the organization or in the local or regional uh, groups, which I'll speak about next. Secondly, my monthly talks. So once a month, I'll do a talk about some aspect of what we're doing. Uh, it could involve other people, be a conversation, or even involve other people at a certain point. So, uh, thirdly, we're going to do one-off events, you know, where Chris Hedges or some famous person comes to speak to us and the rest of the movements, we organize that or there's a training um, or briefing around something that's really interesting, such as dealing with climate disasters in Australia, for instance. Uh, fourthly, we've got the conferences. So we prototyped this earlier in the year, and we're going to do this again in February, potentially three a year, bringing people together from all corners of the globe, talking uh, from many, many different sorts of movements and uh, backgrounds to have this uh, bringing people together, getting people to talk, listen to each other. And last but not least, and what I think is increasingly important, is bringing together, you know, talented young people to do leadership training so they can take on the role that I hold and other like leaders in the movement and actually bring on the younger generation, which we all know is absolutely vital to the long-term strategy of what we're going to do. Talks. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is groups. So I'm not going to talk much about this. Robin's going to go into more details. But we have got this idea of having lots of regional groups which create more regional groups around the world that uh, create um, a co group culture and around the values that we hold. And the main thing you need to know at this stage is it involves getting a badge, okay? It's obviously the most important thing. So you're going to have a little bit of a dose of humour. You know, after the badge, you move on to the T-shirt and then the overcoat, whatever. But yeah, there's going to be different stages and we're going to experiment and we very much want your feedback. But it's getting you guys to talk to each other and support each other and start getting assemblies and projects going in your areas of the world or supporting them and training them. So last but not least, there's networking. So it's a little bit frustrating that I've put into prison just as myself and various other people are on the verge of getting a global movement on the go around the existential situations we face, artificial intelligence, inequality, climate, tech, bringing all these 
massive headfuck things together and having days of demonstrations in November and April, along with cultural uh, activities and festivals and all the rest of it. So there's a significant amount of money for such potentialities. Uh, we're probably going to get £400,000 of funding to start assemblies and these global events happening, and there's possibly £5 million waiting. In other words, as the situation gets worse and these existential situations become more obvious, then it's not rocky science to work out that super rich people are going to want to give their money away before they lose it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if we can get our shit together, basically there's the money there to fund hundreds of people to work full time on getting this thing on the go. Concretely, what does this mean for you now here today in the next few days and next week? The two things are, first of all, this is an organisation. To be part of this organisation, you do need to give money, whether that's $1 a month for 50 pence a month for two euros, right? It doesn't matter. It's not the amount you give. It's the fact you do give something once a month. So you haven't done that or you have and you can give a bit more, then please do so because that's the criteria for membership. This is a membership organisation. And then once a month, you can join with other people and have a chat with them and go through these stages of development and mutual support as Robin will outline. The second thing is we've got these 3,000 people, got all of you on this call. We want all of you to get five more people into these intro talks, into the monthly talks, into the conferences over the next 12 months. So we can get up to those 10,000 people on our mailing list. Okay, so that's five people. Uh, you know, you can send out emails, you can have a chat. People want to know that this is what they're looking for. In other words, an international organization that is going to support, concretely support the new civilization that's going to come after the inevitable collapse that so many people know is now, is now going to happen. In other words, they want some positive message of what they can do with their lives. And we've got to get out there and give them that opportunity. Okay. So I think that is broadly it <laughs> for this communication, not least because I've got limited phone time. But I do want to finish by saying a great thanks, heartfelt thanks to the core group who've been supporting me and this project while I've been running around, you know, getting myself in trouble, as you might say. And also to all of you and everyone else who sent me, you know, messages of support and obviously the other prisoners in Just Up Oil and other projects around the world so important and I'm so, so appreciative of, of all of that. So my final message, <laughs> uh, somewhat provocatively, you might say, of course, called this, you know, free of the bird. Basically, I've been sentenced to five years in prison, as you, I'm sure you, you know. Um, myself and Robin have been trying to work out whether this is the longest sentence in UK history, European history. We're not quite sure, but it's in that ballpark. Uh, but as you notice, I'm not being miserable, I'm not being bitter, I'm not being angry. I'm being enthusiastic about the job that we have to do. And that's because I know, and we all need to know, that we're in this world, but we're not of it in a fundamental sense. In other words, our freedom is rooted in our consciousness, not whether the door to our room is locked or not. So all the blocks to our success are not material, they exist in our heads. And this is enormously exciting. And the revolution right, is not going to be a matter of the material. It's going to be a matter of the spirit. And dare I say it, I am living evidence of this talking to you now, which, dare I say it, is my famous last words, of course. So never say never. But that's my message. And I'm wishing you all all the best. Thank you so, so much for all that you all do. I appreciate it so much, and so will the next thousand generations. So thank you, everyone, and bye for now.